Since the dawn of flight, the effects of acceleration on the body have been felt by pilots. This effect is usually referred to as g-force, which can lead people to believe that it only occurs as a result of the force of gravity. On the contrary, during spaceflight these forces can occur only due to the acceleration of the craft, pulling the pilot along as it changes speed and direction. Because acceleration like this is normally referenced in comparison to the normal amount of acceleration due to gravity on the Earth's surface, multiples of g's are used as a unit, like meters are used for distance or seconds for time. A single g is equivalent to 9.8 meters per second squared and is what you normally experience on Earth due to gravity. G can be expressed according to the axis that the acceleration is applied. Positive G is exerted by pitching or translating up, positive GZ. Negative G is pitching down or translating down, negative GZ. Longitudinal G is by translating forward or aft, positive GY or negative GY. And lateral G by yawing or translating side to side, positive GX or negative GX. When a pilot of an aircraft performs a turn, the acceleration or G experienced by the pilot is increased. In a gentle turn, a pilot may experience 2G or 2 times normal gravity. This means that in this situation, the aircraft and everything inside it now weighs twice what it would normally. If the pilot weighs 80 kilograms normally, under 2G the pilot now weighs 160 kilograms. High performance aircraft are capable of performing turns that exert up to 9 Gs. As the amount of g-forces increase, the additional strain applied to the pilot can begin to take its toll physically. During high-speed turns when the aircraft is pitched up, the pilot's blood increases in weight. As the pilot's blood becomes heavy, the heart cannot effectively keep the blood from being pushed down towards the body's lower extremities. The brain now begins to become deprived of blood and the oxygen that it carries. The first effects of the lack of oxygen in the head is experienced by the pilot as their vision graying, a loss of colour. This is referred to as a grey out and is caused by low oxygen supply to the eyes. If G4 supplied remains at the same level, the grey out will progress into a tunnel vision where the pilot's peripheral vision is lost, retaining only central vision. If the applied G is not unloaded, the pilot will eventually lose all vision. This is referred to as blackout, during which the pilot's vision is lost, however they remain conscious. If the g-force is not reduced quickly by unloading, the pilot will experience g-induced loss of consciousness, or g-lock. Following a g-lock event, the pilot will be dazed for a short period of time as they come to, while their brain reboots. This is a very dangerous event that can easily kill pilots as their aircraft is essentially without a pilot for many seconds or even minutes. When the pilot experiences negative g by pitching downwards, the effect is reversed. Blood is now pushed from the lower extremities towards the pilot's head. When the negative G is sufficient, this will result in what is referred to as a red out. In a red out, the pilot's vision becomes reddened due to the blood laden lower eyelids partially covering the eye. The human body is able to tolerate a lot more G laterally, side to side, and longitudinally parallel to the spine than vertically. The human body is also able to handle short duration high level G loads more effectively than long duration high G loads. G effects vary by individual depending on their training, age and fitness level. Untrained individuals not used to experiencing high G forces will G lock somewhere between 4 to 6 G. Pilots are protected from G lock in part by training and in part by the aircraft's life support system. Pilots are trained to perform the anti-G strain maneuver or AGSM when under heavy G. This is sometimes referred to as the hook or hick maneuver due to the sound that is made when performing it. In this maneuver the pilot strains the muscles in the body's lower extremities, the legs, the glutes and the abdomen, along with increasing the pressure in the chest by taking in a breath and making the sound hick Slow down. to close the glottis or voice box with a cadence of one quick breath every three seconds. These actions together restrict the blood flow out of the head under high G, helping to maintain the brain's blood supply. With only the use of this manoeuvre, the pilot can increase their G tolerance by up to 3 Gs. Experienced, trained pilots can withstand 9 Gs and higher without loss of consciousness by using the hook manoeuvre alone. This is not an easy feat and takes a great deal of physical effort. The aircraft systems that protect the pilot is the G-suit. The G-suit in most aircraft are made up of tightly fitting trousers that have inflatable pneumatic bladders built into them that are connected to and activated by a weighted valve in the aircraft that responds to increasing G by inflating the bladders. 
The inflated bladders put pressure on the legs and the abdomen, helping restrict the blood flow into the lower body, maintaining blood pressure in the upper body and the head. Newer versions of the G-suit can use liquid contained in fluid muscles, instead of air filled bladders to provide the required pressure. The liquid filled suits are totally self contained and do not require connection to the aircraft itself and cover the whole body. The liquid filled G suits also have a much faster response time to G onset than the more traditional pneumatic G suits and are able to protect partially against red out. Fluid muscle G suit wearing pilots are capable of sustaining upwards of 12 G. Spacecraft travelling between planets are often either in microgravity or freefall, but pilots will still experience these forces as a result of the acceleration of their spacecraft, which then pushes the pilot, who then experience forces similar to what gravity produces. Many spacecraft and star citizens are capable of high G turns, especially if your vector is reversed 180 degrees. G forces in Star Citizen are modelled to act as they would in real life, where positive G causes blackout and negative G causes redout. If high G is not unloaded, the pilot will experience G-lock. G-lock will be followed by a short period of disorientation where you will have no control. The onset direction of G being felt by your avatar is more difficult to discern in space due to there being no up or down, and the spacecraft can travel in any direction regardless of the direction the nose is pointed. The best indicator for the direction of G currently is a combination of the total velocity indicator and the physical effects. If the vision of your avatar is greying or narrowing into tunnel vision, your avatar is heading towards blackout or G-lock. In this case, the G-forces are pushing down on your avatar in positive G to unload, either strafe in the opposite direction of your travel or roll 180 degrees. Decoupling can also help unload as the IFCS will no longer be attempting to correct your ship's slide. The IFCS Safety G-Safe is a G-limiter system that limits the acceleration in any axis to protect the pilot from G-lock. Turning off G-Safe will allow higher acceleration but will require active management by the pilot to prevent G-lock. The more agile a ship is, the higher a chance the pilot has of blacking out. In the future, pilots will be able to decide to wear flight suits that will possibly give better G protection than personal armour. The decision to wear one will come with the drawback of little to no protection from small arms fire if a pilot has to eject and defend themselves from hostile ground forces. Understanding your limits and how to manage the effects of G is a critical skill in a high paced dogfight and can mean the difference between life and death. Good hunting pilots. For more information on how spacecraft systems work in Star Citizen, please refer to the spacecraft flight manuals found on the RSI website. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.